Over 975 games have now been announced to be released at the Essen Spiel trade show, which, as of the time of this recording, is still over five weeks away. And more titles are still being added every single day to the list. <laughs> When's it gonna stop? Probably on October 24th when the Essen Spiel begins, now that I think about it. In the meantime, I'm still continuing with my list of my top 100 picks, with the next 10 coming right up. Hello there, and welcome back to this Pair of Dice Paradise special series of my top Essen Spiel picks. Now, for this list, I am focusing on games that I haven't covered in other recent videos, also with games with a 2019 English release date. However, that still leaves more games to wade through than I thought humanly possible to do. And this episode will get us to the halfway point of the list. <laughs> Which, even so, I'm not actually sure really matters, because time has become irrelevant while endlessly sifting through this seemingly infinite list of games. But, even so, every now and then, you, you come across a game that makes all of this worth it. Which is the case with a game that I'm including on this list actually as an honorable mention. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you High Low, a game efficiently described as, quote, a card game that has a title composed of four letters. But very few game descriptions are brave enough to rely solely on the game title's character count. Well, never mind that this information was as helpful as a cable television technical support call center that's operated by an inbred family of rabid wombats. <laughs> no, no, no. You have earned this episode's honorable mention, Hilo. Earned it. Continuing on now with the rest of the list, number 41 is Paris New Eden, a pool building game of city building and wagering published by Matago. Paris New Eden introduces a world in which the world's once bustling world cities have been hushed and lie still following an apocalyptic event across the entire world, I would suppose. Your goal is to forge a future in this strange new world. I should have rewritten this. Equip your shelter, manage your resources, and rally a community of various survivors, all while making your way through the jungle cityscape. Now, by drafting dice, you will recruit survivors of different types. Tinkerers, brawlers, healers, sages, farmers, jacks of all trade, or even useless survivors. Excuse me, game. They prefer the phrase expertise deficient civic inhabitants. Thank you very much. Points will be scored by recruiting survivors and feeding them, by fulfilling objectives, and by completing secret missions. And at winter's end, the player who's accumulated the most victory points wins the game, and possibly the world. The future of Paris is in your dice-filled hands, so go at it and win! Number 42 is Spies and Lies, a Stratego Story, a game of secret unit deployment, bluffing, and deduction from Jumbo. Now, welcome to the final days of a deadlocked war that has been raging since, since at, at least since the game was set upon the table. Victory will hinge on the actions of a handful of spies that you have at your disposal. Players will go head to head with their opponent as they secretly select soldiers with different abilities to engage the enemy with. Each player will then have the opportunity to sabotage their opponent's missions by using careful deployment, deduction, and a little bit of deception. Now, I won't lie, when I first discovered that Spies and Lies is based on the Stratego universe, I was a little apprehensive. Uh, not only because the Stratego IP can have some stigma associated with it, but also because I disgusted myself by suggesting that there is now a Stratego universe. I mean, <laughs> come on man, not every IP needs its own dedicated universe. Games can be associated with Stratego, yes, but still stand on their own, which Spies and Lies actually does. There are certainly many references back to Stratego units and mechanisms in the game, but it seems to approach them from a different angle, which is why I'm curious to find out more about Spies and Lies and why I included it in my Essen Top 100 series universe at number 42. Number 43 is Jagged Alliance, the board game, a fighting miniatures board game based on the Jagged Alliance video game published by Underground Games. Jagged Alliance, the board game, is a cooperative experience that allows players to take the role of their favorite Jagged Alliance mercenaries to battle Deirdreana and her minions in a game with variable combat tactics. The game supports brief skirmishes, sprawling campaigns, and custom scenarios as well, incorporating elements from combat games such as Dark Souls, Imperial Assault, or even Conan. 
or Conan, or Deirdre. It also attempts to provide players with tactical decisions, evolving enemies, and tons of gear and equipment to use when managing your militia to defend your hard-won sectors of the city. I just found out that number 44 is Castle Von Logan, a medieval adventure game featuring bluffing and negotiation by Underground Games. Castle Von Logan is a co-op, group decision-making, survival board game that is wrapped lovingly within a dungeon-crawling gaming experience. Now, during each turn, players have to decide where to go next, solve the secrets of the room in which they have arrived in, then battle the enemies who are protecting it, then prepare for the next encounter when they do it again. The only route to winning the game is through survival, and to survive, they need to work together. And that means none of this, nah, -uh, and more of this. Hmm, mayhaps. Oh, spoilers. Number 45 is Ocean Crisis, a cooperative dice rolling tile placement game with an environmental theme and 11 letters by Shepherd Kit Incorporated. Ocean Crisis depicts a real-life environmental disaster in which a million tons of massive plastic waste is poured into the ocean every single year. It's a lot of crap. Players must work together to do whatever it takes to stop the formation of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, aka the Ocean Wasteland, aka what happened to all the dolphins, mommy? On each turn, ocean waste occurs on rivers, along seashores, and within the ocean itself. All players must then cooperate and place their workers by choosing from two actions, waste cleanup or environmental activity. If players can survive a six-turn bombardment of ocean waste without having the Great Pacific Garbage Patch form completely, well then the ocean crisis is prevented and the players win the game altogether. <sighs> if only though it was that easy in real life. Unfortunately, our society's addiction to consumerism makes combating the overproduction and waste of overpackaged products extremely difficult to prevent in, in any actual meaningful way. Now, as a result, we are now wading in the material that makes up the material possessions that we often don't even need. And now, a word from our sponsor. Welcome back! Number 46 is Yukon Airways, a pick up and deliver dice game by Ludonova. In Yukon Airways, pilot your seaplane on missions to transport travelers to different points of the Yukon. Passengers are the dice that you will draft, and for each one, you'll earn money and the possibility of improving your little airplane. And at the end of the game, you'll earn a little extra money according to the different locations that you have visited. Number 47 is Runestones, a set collection game requiring thoughtful hand management, published by Queen Games. Did you know that the time has come to find the most powerful druid? And we're going to let them claim the throne. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. Now, to do this, we will need players to take on the role of those druids, who must then prove their skills handling the most powerful of rune stones. They will summon creatures by magic and benefit from their abilities, all in a search for precious, precious gems. Because, as their collection of artifacts grows, the druids' rune stones become more and more powerful, and each stone gives the druids points and a permanent ability. These abilities will aid in acquiring gems and artifacts all the more, and the power points that they earn will increase the player's chance to claim that coveted throne that we mentioned in the first place, which is what this is all about. I'm coming back to full circle. The druid with the most power points at the end of the game, guess what, ascends to that throne and becomes the winner of the game. Runestones is a deck-building, hand-management game designed by Rudiger Dorn, whose other games include Karuba, Luxor, Istanbul, and one of my top 10 all-time favorite games ever, Las Vegas. Now, in Runestones, every card has a unique number on it, and two cards from your hand will always have to be played together, with the higher-numbered card being removed, then, from the player's deck. So, you gotta be careful which cards you buy and when you play them to prevent losing your best cards. Designer, Rudiger Dorn, seems to have incorporated something into Runestones that I love about Las Vegas. Players can go and develop and execute a plan, sure, but eventually, you're going to get painted into a corner and have to hope that the tactics that you have employed up to that point have been smart enough to overcome this corner that you are now stuck in. And I am hoping that that is also the case here, because that's why this latest game from the Rudiger Dorn universe is on my list of my top s and picks. Now, you may have noticed that I am not covering very many expansions on this list. But I am going to make an exception for number 48, the Skull and Sails expansion for Ascension, published by Stoneblade Entertainment. 
In this latest expansion to this deck building game, the Age of Sail has come to New Vigil. The tropical lands that surround the Valley of the Ancients are all up for grabs, with not only enough gold to make yourself king, because apparently wealth is all that's required to govern a territorial principality, but also the legendary Crystals of Command, an artifact rumored to give its owner the power to control the land, the seas, and the skies. It, it turns you into Captain Planet. In Ascension, Skull and Sails, players have a seaworthy ship at their disposal, and they will use a new resource, crew, to move it around the board map, which they can do to gain an advantage over their opponents, or challenge Thukal the Kraken. And what pirate adventure would be complete without raiding and getting treasure? I can't think of any. But that's okay, because the new raid ability allows players to capture valuable treasure cards from their opponents. So take command of your ship, join the adventure, and the game's description enthusiastically encourages us, find gold and glory on the severed seas within Ascension's Skulls and Sails expansion. Righto. Number 49 is a city building game set in the Wild West, Coloma by Final Frontier Games. Now, Coloma is the town where an unexpected event happened that shaped the history of the western frontier in the winter of 1848. A man, building a sawmill on the south fork of the American River, spotted some bright nuggets in the waters below. And sure enough, it was amber, with a prehistoric mosquito trapped inside. And that's how the Jurassic Park became to be. Then, a week later, someone else discovered gold and triggered the California Gold Rush. In the game of Coloma, you are a pioneer who has taken a break from his research into dinosaur genetic manipulation in order to travel out west and strike it rich. You will then prospect for gold and use your windfalls to recruit workers, rustle up horses, and establish businesses such as the first prehistoric theme park in the Old West. You will also get opportunities to explore the surrounding riverways and the frontier lands, but alas, you are not alone because scores of other pioneers have also gotten the idea to start prospecting for gold, undoubtedly to finance their own unholy ecological experimentation on ancient reptiles. And so, you will need every ounce of cunning and tactics at your disposal in order not to go bust with the rest of them. So stake your claim, make your fortune, and build a genetic failsafe into every velociraptor that you reanimate in Coloma. Note, this game has nothing to do with dinosaurs. Chaz is just kind of an idiot. And number 50 is the game of bluffing animal deduction from Cinnamon Games, Oh Fox! Now, let's say, just for a moment, that you and I are various woodland creatures. Perhaps you are a squirrel, and you are an owl, and I am a socket wrench. And together, we stumble onto a fresh batch of sweet berries that we can all eat. They're just sitting right there, just waiting to be taken and devoured. Boy, <laughs> should you make a grab for them, or hesitate? because that vague shadow that you spotted earlier could be a predator. They want what's theirs, and they're ready to pounce on you at any time, from anywhere, and destroy you if they don't get what they want. <laughs> Reminder, uh, call your bookie and let them know you're going to be a couple of days late on this month's payment. In O Fox, players assume the roles of animals of the forest, each with their own unique ability. Prey animals are gathering food while being hunted by the predators. So over the course of eight turns, players will move across the board by simultaneously playing one face-up movement card each turn. However, <laughs> it's not that simple. The figurines don't actually move until the very end of the game. So who is whom and where are they? Can you hide your identity and figure out where the others are before it's too late and Johnny Ninefingers breaks your legs? I mean, an owl bites you? Find out in O oh Fox, the 50th game on my top 100 Essen picks and where we leave off this episode. But join me again in just a few days as we continue on to the next batch of my top picks from the games coming up at this year's Essen Spiel. Till then, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, unless you're an associate of Jimmy the Squid, in which case I've been Fernando von Thibelstein. Whether you're a tabletop gamer or an interstellar life form that just enjoys dice, you'll absolutely adore hanging this playful Pair of Dice Paradise shirt upon your body. Unless you're a being of pure energy that has no corporate form, in which case you could, I don't know, use it as a dish rag. <laughs>